So fancy. What a fancy dinner. Spoiled dog. Who is that? <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? Oh, it's Slash. What's up? What's happening? Slash just might be the coolest guy alive. As if his band Guns N' Roses wasn't a big enough achievement in itself, he's also been named by more major magazines for their greatest guitar player, guitar solos, and guitar riffs list than I can count. He's performed for millions across the world and played with everyone from Michael Jackson, Alice Cooper, Metallica, Aerosmith, Ozzy, and the Rolling Stones. He's found enormous success in bands like Velvet Revolver and as his own solo act. He's a best-selling author, he knows more about dinosaurs than Dr. Grant, and hell, he's even died and come back to life. Beat that. Slash has provided the soundtrack to so many of our lives, and I've personally been such a massive lifelong fan that he's been my go-to Halloween costume several years in a row. Most recently, Slash has been producing horror movies, which is how he and I wound up meeting a few years back, and we've been friends ever since. In first getting to know him, I was blown away by how deeply he loves the horror genre, how intelligent, kind, and compassionate he is, how hard he works, and most of all, just by how down-to-earth and humble he is for being a living, breathing legend and one of the most iconic artists in the known universe. The thing about Slash is, he's truly one of us, and he's someone that I'm unbelievably proud to call a friend. I'm Adam Green, and tonight, the one and only Slash joins me for my scary sleepover. Uh, I'm good. Boy, good. Take your stuff. Yeah, here's all the stuff down. Thank you. So, did you you just got back off the road? What like recently, right? A week ago. A week ago. Yeah, a week ago. Less than a week ago. And you were in India last. India and, and Eastern Europe, Russia and Czechoslovakia, <laughs> Poland, all that. I mean, you're used to it at this point. But when you go to a place like that and they know all the words to a language that they don't really even speak, yeah. what is that like? It was, it was pretty massive in India because it was the first time that we'd ever been there. And uh, they sang all the lyrics to every song. And it was, it was pretty overwhelming. And then there, some footage came out online and they were singing Sweet Child of Mine. And someone had shot it from one of the buildings outside the venue, you know, from up above. Oh, wow. And it was really pretty moving. <laughs> This is really cool or really creepy. I know you're a Kiss fan. Right. I mean, everybody was at, at, at some point, but uh, it took me forever to actually find all four of those dolls or action figures, whatever you want to call it. They're they're just they're they're creepy, is what they are. It's they a look little like they would actually come to life and climb out of their boxes. They're too big to be dolls. Too big to be action figures and too small to be. I don't know. It's hard to find them like pristine in the boxes and like they still work and. What do and, they do? Uh, well, you press the button and they, they play songs. It's also kind of uh, women repellent in a weird way. because well, like, you still have them in the boxes for one. <laughs> yeah. Which always freaks girls out. It's like, why would you have something? Do you keep any stuff in the boxes? I do, actually. <laughs> there you go. Well, yeah. between those and the E.T. dolls, um, I will pretty much never uh, date again. Well, so. no, no, there's someone out there for you, too. <laughs> They're just in <laughs> I know you love dinosaurs, so we found this uh, very expensive, um, really amazing. Uh, see. Well, I thought the game would be if you could name that dinosaur. So if I pull out a dinosaur, and if you can name it. <laughs> I guess, all right, so, well, we'll, we'll start here. Um, that's a T Rex. That is a T Rex. Yes. Um, they have the names on the bottom. Yeah, That's they have the funny. names. This is uh, this is a That's plant. A palm tree. Well, yeah. it's actually a, a, a what do you call it? Oh fuck, I can't remember what those are called. But back in <laughs> the back you. In, no, well, I'm not. I'm not a bunch a paleontologist. of paleontologists. <laughs> <laughs> Came with rocks. Far out. Right. The, the rocks. This is medium rock. No, just <laughs> this that's is a, that's a stegosaurus. Yeah, that was an easy one. Uh, another um, Florida palm. Um, okay, that's an ankylosaur, but 
there's different species of ankylosaurs, so it might be one of those species. This just says ankylosaur, oh, so okay. I mean, this. I thought maybe at, at this point in time they'd gotten they'd gotten a little bit more scientific. This was ten dollars, so <laughs> it, it's <laughs> it could be slightly confusing which which is which. I'd say that's an allosaurus, and this is a raptor. Raptor and uh, also, no. Uh, I think Ceratosaurus? It should have the... Oh, Dilophosaurus. Yeah. Oh, see, that's that's what you would go, you know, the, like, dinosaur fanatics that I see on Instagram and stuff that I follow. Yeah. They get really upset when you, like, uh, do the, the so anatomically incorrect proportions on a dinosaur, and that's what this is. There's two like this, so I should yeah, show yeah. you both. That's, Just, that's sort of a tricky one. Yeah. Well, that's a Brachiosaurus, and that... And this is either, I want to say it's an apatosaurus, yes. but... Yeah. See, I would have said brontosaurus. Well, it is. But a brontosaurus doesn't exist anymore. Oh, right. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah. They are, oh, man. Uh, well, I feel that old. That was one of those old stories where Copeland and Marsh, during the dinosaur discovery races back in the, I don't know, what's the early 1900s, and they were competing with each other for the most fossil finds. And I can't remember which one of them did it, but they found a skeleton and they took the, the skull of a Camarasaurus and put it on the, the sauropod and called it a brontosaurus, and he won the battle. But it turned out years later that that was not the right skull. Yeah. So they found the right skull, and now it's called an apatosaurus and bummed us all out after years and years yeah. of training to be <laughs> brontosaurus, yeah. <laughs> It's really uh, fucked up that I, I know all this shit. <laughs> but did you ever think about getting into like archaeology or anything? No, no. I just had this this passion for dinosaurs that, as a kid, and so I just sort of it never went away. But I didn't want to make a career out of it. It's just sort of like one of those things that interests you. It's almost what you consider a hobby. Right. But, you know, I mean, I go to museums and I meet with uh, paleontologists all the time and get to go sort of behind the scenes at different museums and look at their collections and so on and so forth. Do you feel like that's maybe what started to lead to your love of like monsters and, and horror was? It, I think there's something that, you know, you're just innately born with because it was always like, you know, snakes and tarantulas and lizards and all that kind of stuff when I was really, really little. And so that just falls into both categories, sort of like dinosaurs and monsters, because dinosaurs are fucking big, and yeah. they're all, so it's all relative. And it just has always been that way. I can't remember being suddenly inspired to like that stuff. It just seemed to go with the territory. If Jurassic Park existed, if tomorrow they announced it, is there a price that would be too much to go? In, in your oh, mind. to actually go? And really see I mean, dinosaurs. more than I could pay, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'd I give would everything. pretty much give everything I had. I'd sell my house. I did whatever I had to do. Yeah. Just, I mean, I can't. I'd make phone calls, see how I could get in. <laughs> well, I guess you could do that. <laughs> or we could just sit together and scheme up a way to sneak in. Become, to sneak in. Become that casualty that they make a, a movie about. And then the fence is Based fail. on a true story. Right. <laughs> so this, I get to join the pretty long list of people that have been in here and signed this wall, so, shit. Boy, I have to draw this thing. Wow. That was awesome. Nice job, that's right. really great, thanks. Cool. Actually, can I take a piss? I'm out of here. You didn't have this because there's chocolate in it. All right. You what? All right, no, well. You those two pajamas? No, I, I, I couldn't have competed with that. <laughs> no, I mean, I have to be totally honest. I mean, I play along and everything with the pajama kind of thing, but I don't really own any pajamas. And, you know, I travel all the time. And this is basically, I just sleep with my clothes. And, <laughs> or I don't wear any clothes at all if I'm fortunate enough to be in a hotel, so. I bought but, so many bad pajamas just for shooting this series, because, like, I try to not repeat them too often, but I have, like, a Darth Vader onesie, I like I mean shit that I'll probably never wear again. I you know, I, fuck it, I won't lie, I wear it all the time. <laughs> it's it's really comfortable. I brought my guitar. Cause I like to have a, a guitar with me at all times. So after shows or on days off or whatever, or even on the bus, I just have a guitar that I always have with me that just stays on my person all the time. So it never it never gets old for you. You're never like 
especially after a tour, you're never like, you know what, I don't want to pick up a guitar for like a week. Like, I'm... No, you're not fucking bitching. <laughs> That's I awesome. Mean, all things considered, I mean, I have to, to be really thankful for um, the fact that I, I love what I do to the point where you know, I'm just so immersed in it all the time that it doesn't get old for me. And, oh, you like my guitar picks. Yeah, originally so, I thought uh, it would be a fun that. game to play Guitar Hero because you're in the game. Uh, and then I'm like, it would be even better if like you don't really know how I to play it. Guitar Hero. Because you know how to really play guitar. Well, I'm, you know what, when I first got turned on to Guitar Hero, it was, it was uh, Guitar Hero 2. And I'd gone, I was on the Gibson bus for something and I had my kids with me. And you know the kids were said, so "What can we do to occupy the kids for a minute?" So I took them in the back, and they had Guitar Hero, and so I'd heard about it, but I'd never seen it in action. Anyway, so they played that for a while, and then uh, Gibson sent me Guitar Hero to my house. So you know, I got into it. Next thing you know, I'm locked in my like little office space with the door closed, and I don't come out for like three days. I'm just like trying to get to the next level, and fucking you know, and, you know, playing all these metal songs that are like really fast and all yeah. this shit. So I got really hooked on it to the point where I had to disconnect it and just put it away. And from that point forward, I didn't play Guitar Hero again because I was in the game and it was just too fucking weird. You know? I assume I know what's in that box. <laughs> I feel and... like this is like show and tell. Hey, well, no, it's, it's totally show and tell. <laughs> so this is, and it's still in the case because I just got off the road a week ago, so it's... And how many of these do you have? Um, not, everybody always asks me that, just a couple, you know. Um, People I, must be trying to steal that left and right. I've had like, it stolen, I've, well this one I haven't had stolen, but I've had the one, I used to have one that was encased in leather, and I had that for the longest time, but before it had leather on it, it was just a canvas hat like this, and it, it got stolen a couple times. And eventually I was just like, okay, and I just put it away, so that's one, I have like three cool hats that I've had for a really long time. And then this one, which I just got from, um, what's it called? Uh, oh, fuck. Trash and Vaudeville in New York. And it's just a, a store. My friend Jimmy runs it. And, uh, and he had a couple of those in his store. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get this brand new one. That way I don't have any sentimental a attachment to it in case somebody takes off with it. It wasn't really a conscious decision, was it? Not, like when the first time you put one on, thinking like, "Oh, this is going to become like this uh -oh. iconic thing that I'm known no, for." No, it still for. seems sort of like, I mean, it's 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 you're it's sort of a fortunate kind of a thing too, because you'd have like, you you know, you're on the road all the time, and you don't fucking get, have a chance to like wash your hair and shit. You have know, bad hair days for right. days, right? And you just fucking have a top hat. It's awesome. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be playing a place the size of say the whiskey or playing at like Giant Stadium or something. Like I, I get really shy, up. it's just looking out at a crowd of any size really freaks me out. So I would just get all my hair on my face and just pull the hat down and just play my guitar. So you're just sort of in this little world and it, so it still serves that purpose. Do you still get nervous? Oh man, if I look at the crowd for more than two seconds, my knees buckle, <laughs> you know, I'm not good at, at that. So yeah, I've got shades, I got everything to sort of block all that stuff out. And the, the, the hat's always been great for, a, a, a great tool for that. Well, I mean, uh, I, I'd love to compare style stories, but uh, I shop at Target. Well, you can almost get one of those at Target. I mean, that's really like probably a $25 hat. Sweet. So after tomorrow, I'm going to be cool too. <laughs> No, I was telling my I was telling my girlfriend about Frozen. You know, I was explaining who you were because she's never met you. And I was thinking about how when we first met, what a big sort of fan you were of like you know Guns N' Roses and all that stuff. And I was thinking about how impressed I was with like you behind the scenes actually making Frozen and how you're like in this total sort of focus zone. You know, doing your thing and, and, and making it happen and having your vision and sort of as a musician, it's the same thing that, that I'm doing. And it's, and it's weird because people have these perceptions from the outside where they're looking at what you're doing and they have, you know, they get really excited about whatever the finished product is, but it's just a different point of view. And I was explaining, sort of fanboying out to my girlfriend about the making of Frozen and how cool the movie it was. Help! He 
he falls, he, he jumps like an idiot and he breaks his legs and he gets eaten by coyotes and they're like, now what the fuck are we gonna do? <laughs> it's fascinating to me. What, what are you really scared of? Like what actually scares you in real life? Public speaking. <laughs> really? Getting in front of a, a crowd and having to go up and, and address them. That's why I could never be a fucking singer. As many bands as I've been in, as much as I've worked with singers, it blows my mind to see, or, or acting for that matter, to be able to go up there and take your, your inner, uh, deepest, innermost thoughts, put them down on paper, and then go and, and address an audience and sing those feelings to them. The, the thing about a guitar is it's, it's a, a connection between you and the instrument. It's a piece of wood, and you sort of absorbed in that. Whereas when you're singing, you're, you're um, standing in front, basically, with, with the exception of the microphone, naked in front of an audience, and, and verbally addressing them. And you have to have eye contact, and there's this whole interaction that goes on on a different level than if you're just playing an instrument. That's always been like my, that's always been, the, I mean, I'm just not that out, outspoken anyway. When you're playing guitar, you sort of, you can, you, it's very sort of, for me, it's very insular. And you're like in this little sort of capsule doing this thing. And there's the, the, the recipro reciprocation of the sort of energy that's going back and forth between the band and the audience, but it's, 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 it's still like in your own little sort of world. And you hide behind the guitar, you know. But going out there and just addressing the audience with just a microphone and really speaking or singing to them is a whole different trip. You know, it's a very different kind of a feeling. Let's see, the other, my other fear, and I actually I've been asked a question similar to this before, and this has come up before, but is the dentist. I hate going to the dentist. I haven't been to the dentist proper for, it's been a couple years, it's been a few years. I'm supposed to go, but I just haven't gone. Did you have a bad experience growing um, up? Or? I think they're all bad. I mean, I, I don't, I can't remember some specific thing that spooked me from the dentist, you know. It's just always been an unpleasant experience all around, no matter what you do to try and sort of cushion it, you know. I'm not one of those people that really, like a lot of the stuff that, that you would call scary for me, like, you know, like scary stuff, like weird shit going on, bad dreams, um, hallucinating for some, whatever. You know, all that stuff always used to, like The Exorcist, always used to turn me on. I always just like, like want to play it out, see what was gonna happen. So yeah. you're laughing at The Exorcist, but then when the Crest commercials would come on or Colgate <laughs> with the cavity yeah. creeps, you were like, get the fuck away from yeah. me, man. Like, the, yeah, Someone wow. sent me we a make picture. holes in teeth. Do we? You're right. <laughs> What's your biggest fear? We make holes and teeth! Cresty, we look! Crest team, we the cavity creeps teeth. are coming! Do you sleep in the sunglasses too? Yeah, it just makes for, so when, the, when you wake up in the morning, there's no bright sunlight you have to contend with. Okay. <laughs> it's well, just a no-brainer, really. Because if, all right, so, if, if I slept in, so, I mean, like, am I, am I, do you think I'm cool enough to, to rock the sunglasses to bed, or? All right, that's a no. That's all right. Mm -hmm. It's cool. I, all right, um, thanks. I'll see you in the morning. I'll see you in the morning. But fuck it. 